Hey guys, I'm Laura from Let New Adventures Begin and today I'm going to talk to you about our Scamp Travel Trailer. We've been the owners of it for a little over a year now, so we put together a list of the things that we really like about our Scamp and some of the things that we don't really love about the Scamp. The first thing that we love about the Scamp as a fiberglass trailer is the fact that it's really lightweight and it was the reason that we were able to get a travel trailer. It's why we were specifically looking for a Scamp because we knew it had all the features inside that we wanted at a weight that our Jeep Cherokee could trailer so we wouldn't have to buy a new vehicle and that is huge. Now the downside of that is that they're hard to find. Scamp only makes a certain number every year. It's a small company based in the U.S. and for us we were looking for a used Scamp for quite a few years before we found something that was in our price point. And I know a lot of people go through the same process. It's hard to find them. There's not a ton of them out there. And usually once people have one, they hold on to it. So it can be hard to find a used one. If you want to buy a new one, I think the waiting list is somewhere between like eight months, maybe close to a year at this point in time. So not the easiest thing to get, but in our opinion, well worth the wait. The next thing that we love about our Scamp is the layout. We have the layout with the side dinette, the bed back here that we keep in the bed form all the time, kitchen and bathroom in the front. So it has every possible convenience that we wanted in a camper in a very small footprint. Now, the downside of that is the bed is kind of small. It's roughly like a full size mattress with rounded corners. And the space from end to end is only a little bit over six feet. So if you're tall, the scamp is really not a good option for you. If you watch our video with the detailed interior tour of the scamp, we actually give measurements and dimensions of everything, which can be helpful if you're thinking about getting a scamp. But if you are above six foot, the ceiling height of the scamp is really just not gonna work for you. The other thing that we found is the toilet in the bathroom is really high. You have to like climb to get onto the toilet if you're shorter like we are. So you, we had to build a little step so that it's easier to get onto there. So you have a couple concessions with the small layout, but all in all, the efficiency of the way that things are fit into this 16 foot frame is really pretty incredible. Now, the fact that the Scamp is a fiberglass shell and it comes in two pieces, so the top is a single piece and the bottom is a single piece that fit together, so there's only one seam that runs around the outside, that's a huge bonus for decreasing the risk of getting a leak. Of course, you can still get a leak, but there are fewer seams and places where that could happen. So I know a lot of campers have big issues with leaks and the fact that there's a lower chance of the scamp having that kind of issue makes me feel really good. The downside of that is the interior of the scamp can be kind of dark because it doesn't have the really giant windows like some of the newer campers do. The windows are smaller. Actually, on this side of the camper by the kitchen, the only source of natural light is this tiny little kitchen window and the tiny little window in the door. So even when it's pretty bright outside, it can be a little bit dark in here. And there's not a lot of overhead lighting either. Actually, there's no overhead lighting all through the center of the scamp. So even at night, when you turn on the lights that are kind of in the corners of the camper, it can still be a little bit dark inside. One of the things that we love about Scamp as a company is the fact that they're built in the US. It is a small business that works on quality instead of quantity. They only produce a certain number every year because they have very strict quality control of the products that they make. The other great thing about that is since we have a Scamp and Scamp really hasn't changed in quite a few years, a lot of the parts are interchangeable. So we can go on the Scamp website if pretty much anything in here breaks, we can go on Scamp's website and order a new piece and we know it's going to fit. I had an older camper many years ago and it was a rare form of camper. It was a 1977 Holiday Rambler. And I figured out very quickly that all the things that were broken on it were a giant headache to fix because I couldn't get parts for it. It was just such an obscure model that 
everything almost had to be custom if I was going to fix something. So RVs move around and they get <laughs> vibrated all the time. So things are going to break. That's just the way it is. So you have to have a plan for replacing those things that are going to break. And it's nice to know Scamp has everything that you could possibly need. Now, a downside to the Scamp that we own in particular is that we don't have an air conditioning unit. This is kind of a plus and a minus for us. We decided to purchase a Scamp that didn't have an air conditioning unit because it was the layout we wanted, it was the price point we wanted, and it was right in front of us. So we had the opportunity and we figured we can always add it later if we need to. But as we started to think about the no air conditioning situation, Yes, it would be nice to have air conditioning in the summer when it's really hot at night, but the cases that that happens is really pretty small for us. We tend to use the Scamp for the shoulder seasons, spring and fall when it's a little bit cooler. So the benefits to not having the air conditioning unit are lighter weight, so less strain on our tow vehicle. We're not as tall because those air conditioning units really stick up pretty high, and it's one less place that we could end up having a leak because we don't have another hole in the top of our fiberglass. So the air conditioning situation is really kind of a personal choice, but those are some things to think about. One of my favorite things about the Scamp is the very cute kind of vintage feeling that they have inside. Now, our Scamp went through a cosmetic update in the spring of 2020. So we repainted all the cabinets and um, changed some of the interior so that it was brighter. And we got rid of the original wood grain that was on all of the cabinets, which I really didn't like. It's a darker brown and it just kind of makes the Scamp feel a little older. So that's something I know a lot of Scamp owners end up doing and it's not the easiest project, but it's definitely doable in a few weekends of priming and <laughs> painting and refinishing. And it makes a big difference in how the interior looks. So the cute vintage feel is really something that was appealing to us. Now on the flip side of that, the Scamp has had pretty much the same sort of layout for several years and it doesn't have a lot of the modern features that you find in newer campers. Our Scamp is a 2012 so still a few years old but a lot of newer campers have things like USB charging ports and LED lights and things like that. We were able to switch out the existing lights for LED bulbs so that's a quick fix but a lot of those other modern amenities you're not going to find in the Scamp which sounds like a negative thing, but to us it's actually a positive. We tend to like having things that are simpler and less automated because that means when they break, it's going to be cheaper to fix and it's going to be easier to fix. So things like when we had a clog in the shower drain and neither of us are super handy, but we were able to, or I should say Patrick was able to go underneath the scamp, take everything apart, clean it, put it back together, and it was fine. So a lot of the things in the scamp, we feel like they are simple enough that we can fix them or take care of them ourselves, rather than having to take the scamp to a very expensive RV mechanic. Given the size of the scamp, we have the 16 foot model. I'm actually super impressed with the amount of storage that is in here. We have had no problem fitting all of our gear, all of our clothes for longer trips into the storage that we have. There are little cabinets underneath things and above things. We don't have a microwave, so that gives us a really big cabinet above our refrigerator. And then you have the two really big cabinets that are right next to the door for storing things like power cables and uh, solar panels and stuff like that. So the storage in the Scamp is done super well. Of course, when you get an RV, you might have some cabinets that are just kind of big open spaces and it does require some kind of creative <laughs> moving things around or creating storage solutions so that you can use more of that open space and so things are organized well. But there's definitely a very good amount of storage space for such a small camper. One of the great features about the Scamp, especially if you have a Scamp that does not have air conditioning, is the fan that is right over the bed. Because times during the summer when we took the Scamp out for a trip and 
when we stayed at our harvest host, we were in the middle of a field in full sun and it was like high 80s that day. So it was warm. And sleeping that night was a little warmer than we probably would have liked, but really not bad. We slept pretty well because we turned the fan on to pull air to blow right onto us when we were sleeping and slept surprisingly well considering how warm it was out. So that's a great thing with having the fan and that trade-off between getting air conditioning or not getting air conditioning. And it was a harvest host, so we were dry camping. We probably wouldn't have been able to run our air conditioning anyway. The other thing that we kind of wish was a little different with this scamp was we wish it was something for season. And I think if we ever get rid of the scamp and upgrade to a different rig, we're going to get something that's for season so that we can do things in the winter with a rig that has insulated tanks. Now we are about to winterize the scamp actually later today and we will continue to use the scamp after it's winterized. I'll do another video explaining how we use the scamp even after the water system is shut down for the season, but there's still a lot of use for the scamp. Most people kind of winterize their RV and pack it away for the season. We try to get a couple more weekends out of it, but I definitely am not willing to push it because we're getting to that time of year where it's getting a little cold at night and I just don't want to chance it getting below freezing and causing any sort of damage to the scamp. You might hear people talking about the interesting wall coverings of the scamp and there's a few other campers that use this same wall covering. Sometimes it's called scamp fur, some people not so affectionately call it rat fur. And a lot of people say that they really don't like it and they have taken it off the walls because they think it's strange. But after doing some research online, especially when I was refinishing the door of the scamp, the fur, which I think is called marine insulation, it's actually boat grade insulation material. This is very good at insulating and preventing condensation. And if you've camped at all when the temperature is a little bit colder, you know that condensation in a small space is a big problem. So most of the people on the forums who ended up ripping off the scamp fur actually regretted it afterwards and said that they were getting a lot more condensation, their rig was not as well insulated without the fabric. So I think this is actually a very clever solution from the company that builds scamps to have the fiberglass be well insulated. It also gives the inside a really nice cozy feel, kind of muffles sound and makes it feel nice, especially if you bump into the wall. When you're sleeping, you're not touching something really cold with condensation running down it. That would be terrible. So it does a great job of maintaining the heat in the scamp. And as we get toward the point of winterizing, I'm going to make another video showing you some of the really special features that our scamp has that the original owner put in, which are Gore-Tex insulated blinds and the Reflectex cut to fit each window. And we're gonna do a little test to see just how well insulated the scamp is when it has those little additions as we go into the winter camping season to see how long we can actually keep enjoying our scamp into the fall and the winter. And then last on the list, I wish that we had one thing in the scamp that I've seen in some other campers, and that is access to the underbed storage from the back of the camper. So that would involve another moving part and another seam in the fiberglass, which could be a good and a bad thing. Um, of course, it opens up another point that could possibly leak at some point, but I think it would be really nice to be able to open up the back and reach all of the storage that's underneath the bed because there's quite a lot of space under there and sometimes I find myself like crawling under to reach the stuff that's in the back. It would be nice if I could get it from outside, but that's just a small thing that would be kind of nice in the future. The last thing that I really don't like about the Scamp is the refrigerator. 
So the fridge itself is fine. It works great on propane and it works pretty well on electric. It doesn't get quite as cold as fast as it does on propane. But the thing that I really don't like about the fridge is the process of lighting the burner when you're turning it onto propane. There's this little slot where you have to try to look into to see if the pilot is lighting and if it's bright out, it's super hard. But even at night, it's kind of hard to see. And we go through this thing every time we try to turn on the fridge of like doing it a few times. Is it on? Go outside and check. Not sure. Wait a little while. Check the thermometer. See if it's getting cold. It should be easier. So my advice to Scamp would be maybe they already have in the new models, but find a better Dometic fridge system where it's easier to turn on the pilot light when you're using it on propane. So that is our list of things that we like and don't like about our Scamp travel trailer. If you have a Scamp or another lightweight travel trailer, tell us the things that you do or don't like about your travel trailer or what you think we could do to make the inside of our camper a little bit more efficient. Thanks for watching. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be, the news and watch here your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there, so don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten, you begin to focus again. And though time flies, we have enough to realize.